Jewish leader, a prominent rabbi, not, not a reformed rabbi, <laughs> calls for synagogues and mosques to be paired across the country for peace. So his plan is to have synagogues and mosques in every city that he can to be paired and twinned for peace. He calls it twinning, and indeed it is happening across America. He writes, why don't you <laughs> He writes about it in Newsweek magazine where he proclaims that the Buffalo experience, the twinning in Buffalo, is a great example of how it works. Shift the scene, two doctors in Buffalo, a Jew and a Muslim. They bond for brotherhood. The Jewish doctor is very excited, very proud of himself. He's got a Muslim friend, do you? <laughs> he thinks he's advancing a peaceful coexistence. I have a Muslim buddy, a wonderful fellow, so smart and charming and so agreeable about the importance of brotherhood. Our Jewish doctor gets invited to go to Syria with his Muslim doctor friend, who introduces them to his religious mentor. The Jewish doctor, impressed, comes home with glorifying tales of brotherhood, rainbows, unicorns, kumbaya. He then gets three rabbis in Buffalo to twin their synagogues with that mosque. He shows how nice the Muslim partner is, and he shows the community the Syrian imam's website in English, where it's all rainbows and unicorns. All is well in the world we are witnessing Tikkun Olam in action. Act two. But a Jewish grandma can't fool that easy. In Buffalo is suspicious because she Googled the Muslim partner fellow and she found him making anti-Israel speeches. She's shocked. She meets a Boston Jewish act activist, actually somebody from the David Project, who was giving a talk there, and she says, can you have somebody help me figure out who this Muslim fellow Imam actually is? The person gave her a resource. This, uh, the, the resource was Ilya. Now, if you've ever done anything in your life that is not 100% kosher, Ilya can find it out. <laughs> Ilya researched. He found that the English site was a sham. But in Arabic, he found a different story. In Arabic, it said horrible things about Israel and about Jews. And the imam had strange visitors for somebody who was such a Jew lover in his mosque. He had Louis Farrakhan. And he had William Baker and the young Nazi. Wow. Act three, research done. Ilya and I get on a plane. We fly to Buffalo. We meet with 50 community activists, members of the Federation, the ADL, etc. And at that meeting of 50 people, we show them Ilya's research. You in Buffalo have been in Buffalo. <laughs> Two of the three rabbis were at that meeting, and they were extraordinarily emotional. They stood up, they clapped their chest, they almost cried, and they withdrew immediately from the 20 program. Our Jewish doctor, though, cannot still accept the facts, and the Muslim doctor cannot still tell the truth, and the leftist professor at Buffalo University did what leftists do. He launched a personal attack on Ilya, although he didn't get 70 names. <laughs> Moral of the story, there's a pattern across the country. Watch out for it. What's the pattern? Muslim radicals seek to snooker Jewish leaders. It's the key to the city. Naive, utopian, dreamy Jewish leaders can't tell moderates from radicals, facts from fiction, and they don't like using Google. <laughs> Highly educated Jewish leaders, rabbis and doctors get taken, but wait, there is that Jewish grandma. Not so easy to fool, she calls us, we do basic research. Rabbis with integrity, um, maybe I have to repeat that, rabbis with integrity, shall I, can look at our data and reach logical, logical conclusions and admit mistakes. Biggest piece of the pattern and the moral of the story, deception is that the key of the other side's game. Okay, now we're gonna